In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Daniel. We're going to continue our series on Daniel, and we've moved out of the prophecy phase for right now. And we've moved on to Daniel chapter 9, where David is really giving this impassioned prayer to God. And this takes place a little bit later than the passages that we've been looking at, but not quite as late as the story of Daniel in the lion's den, for example. So here in Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 through 6, Daniel writes, So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and by supplications, with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, Alas, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned, committed iniquity, and acted wickedly and rebelled, even turning aside from you from your commandments and ordinances. Moreover, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Daniel is pouring out his heart in lamentation. And you'll notice that even though, so far as we know, Daniel was never guilty of these things personally, he's saying that he's using we sort of in a collective sense. And so he's saying that to God, uh, we have sinned, we have committed iniquity, we have acted wickedly and rebelled, we have uh, not listened to your servants or your prophets. Why is he doing this? Because I don't know about you, but whenever I'm in a group of people, even if that group of people is acting incorrectly, I want to distance myself from those people. I don't want to refer to anybody, especially not God, as being a part of that group that is disobedient to him. But the truth is, Daniel loved his people that much. He wasn't going to be held accountable for their sin, but he was lamenting over the fact that the nation of Israel, the chosen people of God, who had that special covenant with God that no other people in the world at the time had. Now, obviously, now that Christ has come, that covenant has been expanded to the whole of humanity. But back then, they had the covenant of Israel, where God told them that he would protect them and that he would make them a great people if they just listened to his commandments, if they just followed that covenant that he gave them with Moses. And by the way, the people of Israel agreed to that covenant and then continued to break it over and over and over and over again. And not just with the generations after the generation that made the covenant, they broke it right then and there. And so it is so incredibly sad, and, and Daniel is obviously distraught by this, that his nation is currently being punished because of what has happened. That his nation has been exiled from the holy land of Judah. That it has been jettisoned, that their people have been taken away from their homeland, not able to worship God in the temple. They don't have the connection to that promised land that they once had. And Daniel is so sorrowful, so upset that it's going on, but he acknowledges it's not God's fault. God held his end of the bargain. God did what he said he was going to do. God told them when the covenant was made, he said, if you obey my commandments, if you listen to my law, if you do what I tell you to, to do and be my children and act obediently, I'm going to bless you and you are going to prosper. And so Daniel is very distraught, very sad that Israel finds itself in the predicament that it is in right now, where he, among others, are Israelites living outside of God's holy land, the land that he gave to their fathers, specifically because of their own sin, their own iniquity, and their own rebellion against God. But Daniel acknowledges that. He's saying, look, Lord, I'm horribly upset about this, but I understand it's not you. 
if we had done what you told us to do from the beginning, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. And so I think this shows a great deal of spiritual maturity. And I've been guilty of it too, so I'm preaching to myself here. But so often when we have something go wrong in our life, sometimes we blame God. Even if we wouldn't say that out loud, we almost look like, God, this isn't the way that life is supposed to be. I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. Do we ever stop and think? And we should stop and think the way that Daniel does is maybe the problem's us. Maybe the reason that we don't have the things in, the, in life that we want, maybe the reason that we are not getting the things out of our life that we desire is because we're not doing what God said. Now, I'm not a preacher of the prosperity gospel. I'm not saying that if you just listen to God's commandments that everything is going to go great in your life, you're never going to suffer. I don't believe that at all. What I am saying, though, is if you are having problems with anxiety or stress or there are certain aspects of your life that you don't like, and I'm not even talking about the physical thing. I'm talking about you are spiritually not where you need to be. Maybe you need to stop looking at God and start looking at yourself and say, there's some things that I need to do to be in accordance to God's word, to become closer to God. And maybe by building that relationship, that's going to improve my spiritual status. That's going to improve where my soul is and bring me closer to a relationship with my father. And maybe that'll start mending the pain, mending the hurt in my spirit. Daniel very wisely and very maturely recognizes, yeah, the covenant is not being fulfilled, but it's not because God didn't keep his word. It's because we didn't keep ours. And that's the same thing that God promises. God doesn't promise an easy life. God doesn't promise you're never going to face hardship or uh, horrible things happening to you. Just like Daniel, even though he did the right thing, wasn't experiencing that. But you know what God does promise? Salvation and peace. A peace that passes all understanding. Contentment, joy. Those are things that God does promise regardless of your worldly circumstances. And if we're not experiencing those things, it's not because God didn't keep his word. It's because we didn't keep ours. That's a lesson that we can take away from Daniel's prayer. We need to pray like Daniel prayed. And remember that when we're asking God for whatever request it is that we make known, he wants that. He desires that for us. But he also desires us to recognize that if there is something that is spiritually not being fulfilled in our lives, it's not because God didn't fulfill it. It's because we're not acting in accordance to the covenant that he made with us. Stay the course, friends. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.